Hello and welcome to the first video of my reef aquarium project. What I've got is a 65 gallon 3 foot display tank sitting on top of a 30 gallon 3 foot sump. And in between is my custom built stand. I designed this myself out of 2x4s and MDF. Uh, the purpose of the video is just to walk you through how I've plumbed the system and designed the sump. Hopefully someone else considering a similar project will find parts of this video helpful. We'll start off with the first challenge I encountered by putting a 3 foot display tank on top of a 3 foot sump. I wanted to maximize the sump size, of course, so that you have lots of room for your equipment, but also so you have the extra water volume. This meant that when I designed the stand, I couldn't have any pillars, uh, 2 by 4 pillars, directly under the display tank. So I had to get creative with the joists in order to handle that load. In the end, it worked out really well. Full display tank has absolutely no issue sitting on top of this tank. Um, I could probably put two, two of these 65 gallon full display tanks up there and I'd still have no issue. As you can see, I've opted to drill the back of the tank for my overflow. There's three holes. Each has a bulkhead that can handle one inch PVC. The right and the left holes are for the overflow, which is designed there with a skimmer bar at the top. And in the middle, you can see my return line. I'll just take a few moments and walk through how I've done this. I opted for this skimmer design rather than the traditional overflow boxes. Just because I found this less intrusive, I was a lot cheaper as well. Also, I get more surface skimming. I get about 20 inches of surface skimming out of this design. Uh, just a note on going with the siphon style overflow box. I did a lot of research into both options when I was designing this display tank. And really, there's no advantage to going with that siphon box other than you don't have to drill the tank. But drilling the tank is really quite easy. Just make sure you've got the proper diamond coated hole saw. Go slow, use lots of water, uh, very little pressure as you're going. But it's easy, it doesn't take very long. Lots of videos out there to help you through that process. There's also a good test you can do with a laptop screen and a set of polarized glasses to determine whether your glass is tempered. Uh, you don't want to be drilling through tempered glass, it will shatter. So really simple test you can do before you start. We'll take a moment here and walk through this overflow bar. If I come around to the side, you can see I've just got a series of 90 degree elbows that lead up to this about 24 inch skimmer bar. It's got two slots, each about 10 inches. I left a little section in the middle uncut so that uh, there's some rigidity left in that tube and that slots about an eighth of an inch. We come around to the back you can see that I've got independent plumbing lines coming off of that overflow. This is just to protect against a flood uh, off that display tank. If one of these lines were to get clogged, a snail from my sump or whatnot got in there, uh, the, other, the other line could handle the return capacity by itself. So. Uh, just an extra precaution, it's not necessary, but I feel better about doing that. In the middle, you can see that's a return line. This has a nylon tube going down to the Eco 633 pump. I've got the side of the standoff just so we can show this here. And you want to go with the nylon tube so you reduce your vibration rather than hard lining right to your pump. Uh, you can get some rattling and whatnot. So if we look at this, come back to the overflow for a moment. You can see I've got two standpipes on either end. That's just to reduce the gurgling noise. If I come in here and pull this off, you can hear that slurping sound. As soon as I put this on, it shuts it right down. There's just a little uh, about 1 16th hole drilled in the top of each of those. Also right underneath the T's that come off of the bulkheads, I've got unions so that I can take this apart for cleaning in the future. And as we come down here, you'll see what I've done is plumbed off a little section with that ball valve. You'll see this better from the front, but that goes directly into the refugium. So I have unskimmed display water uh, coming in from my macroalgae. Just coming back to the return line for a moment, you'll see here I've opted for a check valve to prevent the overflow. Uh, the overflow, of course, happening when your power shuts off and your tank, your display tank, tries to siphon back into your sump. I started with a spring style check valve and when I tested this I found I had about 20% loss off my pump. I didn't like that at all so I went out and found this, a little tougher to find but a little bit more expensive but this is a ball style check valve so there's no spring in here at all, it just has a loose ball. As water is flowing it pushes the ball up, virtually no loss. I'm really happy with the performance I'm getting out of that. If I come around to the front, walk through my sump design here, see it's compartmented off into three sections. Uh, bubble trap in the front. That first section is the is the overflow coming in from both sides. I went with the nylon tubing at the end so that I can see the flow. In here I will eventually have my Skims SM161 skimmer. Uh, really impressed with the construction of the skimmer so far. 
Haven't tried it out yet. I've seen it in action. It looks like it's going to do really well in this tank. Definitely overkill for this tank, which only has about 80 gallons of water once it's all up and running. But, uh, you know, it can't hurt to have an overpower, oversized skimmer. The middle section of course is, of course, the refugium, and you can see my line coming down there for the unskimmed water with a ball valve so I can control that flow. And finally, the third compartment there is the return pump, smallest compartment. Just a note on these glass baffles. So, of course, you can go acrylic baffles in a glass aquarium. Uh, it gets really tricky, though, to bond these to the wall, and you're going to get some flexing because of the, the uh, water pressure in there. Uh, the glass, you know, if you go to your local glass shop, they'll be able to cut some cheap soda lime glass and finish the edges for you, probably for about $5 a baffle. Really worth it if you take the time to do that. Uh, that way you can use a aquarium safe silicone. I've got a tube here. So it says right on here, aquarium safe. Uh, this stuff works really well for bonding glass against glass. Of course, it's how your aquarium is built in the first place in the edges. Uh, super strong bond. So I'm quite happy with how that turned out and very, very glad I ended up going with a glass to glass bond. You also notice that the bottom of my tank, bottom of my stand here is white. Also, up, if I look up into the top, this is all painted white as well. The back of the door, the back of my sides, which aren't showing here, are also white. That's painted with the kitchen and bath mildew resistant paint. I did that so that I, so that I can actually see what's going on when I have my refugium light set up. Uh, that way the light has a chance to reflect back and you're not working in a dark cave. At this point in time, this tank's just set up running with fresh water. Uh, of course, just to test out my plumbing. Uh, in the future, I will have this set, I'll have the, the back painted black, and I'll also have it set up running with my skimmer and salt water, get my sand substrate in the display tank and also into the refugium, and start curing, start cycling my tank. So that's the system. Uh, hopefully you found this a little bit helpful. And please look for my next couple of videos as the project progresses.